everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining for. Thank you for joining us today on day three of the TestMU conference. I hope you've had a good conference so far. I do promise you that this panel is going to be as exciting as all the other sessions that you've been attending. The topic that we're going to be discussing with my esteemed panelists today is managing testing landscape frameworks and tools for an enterprise. Um, you're all practitioners out there. I'm sure you're dealing with the proliferation of different frameworks, different tools, different DevOps technologies for testing, especially in a poly cloud kind of situation. Um, if I go back, you know, 20 years, there used to be one, two, maybe three applications in an enterprise that you would need to test. But now looking at, you know, what's happening in the SaaS world, every department has an application. And you're left with a lot of choices, a lot of decisions on how to decide on your tool chain. So I'm really excited to talk to the panel today. Um, you know, I joked about this yesterday. I'm going to do it again today. We have more than 150 years of experience by these panelists in advising customers on what their testing strategy should be and how they should test, uh, set up their uh, testing landscape. With that, I'm going to welcome my panelists. Uh, first up, I see uh, Rajesh on the screen, so I'll go first with him. So he's the executive director for consulting and quality engineering at Deloitte. Welcome, Rajesh. Thanks. The next, Thank you. I see Adrian. Adrian is the SVP of quality engineering at Apexon. I see Mohan. Mohan Bachu is the associate director at Accenture Solutions. We have. Hemlata Murugesan, she's the Principal Director for Automation, Performance Engineering, and Game Testing at LTI Mindtree. And we have Raghuram Providi, who is the Chief Delivery Officer at Signity. Thank you so much to all of you for joining here today and sharing your experiences with the audience. So let's jump straight into it. I think with you know, what's going on in, in, the, in the whole enterprise landscape, I would love to get started with you, Hema. How are you seeing landscapes changing for enterprises with you know, so many choices of frameworks and tools in the testing world? Okay, so I think uh, today we are spoiled for choices to begin with, uh, Manish. Uh, the reason being that, as you rightly mentioned, there are a lot of tools coming in. Every tool says that this is a good framework to fit in but there is nothing like one size fits all, right? So the way I look at it uh, from uh, this one, we have to definitely check out what is the kind of, uh, um, you know, um, landscape on which the people are working on, the, um, what do you call, uh, you know, across their lobbies without understanding the impact on the environment's landscape, people just jump into the frameworks, right? And these frameworks also is not like one size fits all, as I, 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 I kind of mentioned. We have to look at the release cycles that is getting crunched, the impact of these frameworks to meet the aggressive timeline. So there is a lot of changes that is happening. And every tool, every uh, uh, are talking about this framework scales well. And in uh, today we are talking about BDD, enterprise BDD, DevSecOps, SecOps, and all those things. And there is nothing like this framework which works here will work there as well. I mean, there are the people do not even understand the impact that this framework will have. And over a period of time, because of the customization of the frameworks and different kinds of tools, different kinds of solutions, their own in-house, you know, solutions being embedded into it and all kinds of, you know, um, uh, this one uh, band-aid being done. The scalability of this is having an impact, right? And we see there's a lot of redundancy that's bringing in. And this actually, over a period of time, we see that the regression is getting impacted, the release cycles are getting impacted, and probably we are not doing effective coverage as well as the you know uh, effective testing is what I see. So it has a significant um, you know understanding that needs to be done, and let's not jump into it. I know that's what it's better to do a little bit of upfront planning to do what it needs how the maintenance of the scripts has to be done, how the frameworks has to be maintained, what kind of tools, what is the enterprise landscape. You know, it's not like a short-sighted. You have to look it for a long, you know, three, you know, three quarters, four quarters, six quarters, or what is the kind of stuff. Then you do it along with that skill sets. 
today there are so you know we we talk about java selenium we talk about you know sri sharp we talk about all kinds of skill sets and every other day i mean i'm really tired of noting what is the new name that is coming and is it a vegetable name is it a animal name i mean that's what it is right we sometimes even wonder what whether we are talking you know that that's the way things are so we have to also ensure the team is also constantly skilled on this and without continuous learning we are in an intellectual industry right so if we are not able to catch up on those kind of things that's happening and what the clients are looking for what the industry is demanding what kind of tool vendors are coming in and how the frameworks now we everybody is talking about ai and gen ai and i remember you know about hearing about cloud 15 years back but the cloud actually you know kind of exploded only during pandemic so i really don't know you know if all those things is going to so long story short please take a pause before you even jump into it is what i would say it sounds very scary especially with those vegetable and animal names you know <laughs> deciding on a framework is is difficult and you know i was talking about this with all of you backstage as well there are so many low code no code tools you know cio ctos developers testers are spoiled for choice but i think that's a good segue for me to ask adrian you know with so much things going on so many cops applications sap salesforce hr applications how should an enterprise decide on a unified strategy what's the first step that they should take you know hema hema makes some fantastic um points right uh there are so many tools out there in 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 the the ecosystem right now but it really from from me when i'm looking you know having been on the customer side she made the point about just don't jump right look look at the testing needs of your organization look at the tech stack that you've got um will they integrate into your ci cd pipeline hey what about the founder about skill sets do i have the skill sets within my organization to be able to utilize these tools and there's a there's a lot of rush to to go out to to look at the 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 new tools that are coming on the marketplace but you know my 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 guidance is just just don't do that you know when we started looking at you guys at lambda test you're solving a problem that's been there for for 20 years with hyper execute so make sure that the the tools that you're looking at are going to solve problems for you not just going to the next whiz bang tool like she 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 was talking about that have these creative marketing marketing names the ease of use these low code no code tools that are coming out that say i can do sap i can do oracle etc like that like that um going back to the skill sets they say low no code and 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 you can have non technical people utilize these tools but at the end of the day when they do bring them in you actually need to stand up another small organization with very experienced automation engineers that can create these reusable widgets that these non technical people can do so there's additional cost that you don't see up front when you you don't do the homework um uh, up front you know the, the cost the licensing side of things can it scale to my organization in the future does it have hit, does it have a support mechanism whether it's a user base or their customer service organization to be able to to look at so i think there's a whole plethora of things that organizations need to look at um related to the, the the new tools they're trying to bring into the space whether it's in the ERP space um or or any other space finish and i think you, you you touched upon you know devops and ci cd integration i think that's that's actually the reason why i i brought this topic for this panel because when i'm talking to customers the conversation now is can i get a visibility what's going on across my landscape you know from a testing perspective Um, Rajesh would love to hear, you know, when you are talking to customers, uh, what challenges are they facing in managing their testing landscape? Oh yeah, so wonderful one. So first of all, Manish, thanks a lot for the entire Lambda team having. It's good to be among family and friends, right? So first of all, uh, so if you're, so I like analysis a lot, right? So if you're to think that if the entire test strategy is like the brain of testing, uh, the framework, the landscape, or like the spine of testing, right? So uh more of another major challenge that i see is that the brain and spine are not connected right so you, you might have the best of strategies lined up but if your uh frameworks your landscape and the tools are not aligned to the overall strategy i think uh, you will be moving in a totally different direction so that's the first thing we see because 
when organization take a call on this landscape right it's by default either they inherited a bunch of uh, uh, landscape or a text to uh, text tags to that was already there there the legacy system or they were brought in by the vendor partners uh, along with the existing programs and the pattern that i see is the areas that the choice of these tools are more of commercial driven rather than functionality driven i think that's the first thing i see manish uh, second thing is what hema touched upon right the second is a problem of plenty right if i had to think about the organization like a, a, a joint family of three generations living in together where you have your main frames you have your uh, uh, custom ops your legacy and the package solutions living in like with the hyperscalers the tool stocks has multiple i have seen up to 15 16 tech stacks uh, in a place where people have a problem of maintaining the legacy system maintain the tools and landscape so you have a problem of writing and along with it comes the learning curve right so right. i know hema rightly put saying that we don't know whether it's going to be a vegetable that we're going to cook or we are going to cook a pastrami with the wrong tool right so so uh, there's a lot of learning curve we have selenium selenium karate coming up all in a span of weeks there's a huge learning curve that testing teams comes in right and along with all of these comes in the complexity and the need for speed manisha i think i saw one of the earlier uh, sessions earlier with pradeep was talking right we are so uh, addicted to speed that you forget why we do testing right so uh, so we so we are so running fast and running in a complex chaos so we forget why we test why we run right so so uh, the entire purpose of testing i think all these combined together are the ones that actually drive uh, on the testing so one is the intent itself is, is one thing we let people object in play on the technical side i think i've seen lot of changes in terms of these uh, while you have host of uh, tools and landscape they need not i mean i've seen most of the clients right i've seen clients who asked to do a new qa environment right so they asked for i remember coxy my one uh, kind saying that why don't you set up a 1 million uh qa environment when you have a enterprise application that's running a 6 billion uh, revenue generating enterprise software on it right so people are still questioning why do i need to invest so commercial still plays and two the tools are not always uh, integrated the way we like right so with uh, so you have different um, like uh, uh, he earlier mentioned we have multiple legacy pods running you have multiple silo teams running not everybody uses uh, uh, across organizations right types of tools in pra- the uh, repurposing of tools is one thing i think i think those are the top four or five challenges that i see manish which i think we should together address as a community right i think we should be put environment landscape as a foresight rather than a hindsight right so that's that's my view manish all right let me let me pick up on what you said speed right i think that's that is the real culprit right pace of software delivery has accelerated so much back 20 years ago you used to have 3 4 month cycle of testing but now it has to be done immediately i think that's what is putting pressure on the testing teams right and it's it's not only one thing there are so many different testing that you need to do from a tool and framework perspective you need to do ux testing you need to do api testing you need to do performance testing you might need to do the whole functional testing integration testing so when you think about that Mohan let me direct the question to you that would need different tools right so how should an enterprise leader let's say a cio or a cto think about okay what should be my unified strategy for putting together the whole testing tool chain so uh, let me just go back to the fundamentals of the testing uh, testing is uh, uh, is built on a two activities one is that building the scripts and then executing the script sets so within the building the scripts itself i'll have a different types of suits like smoke test cases regression and end to end test cases that means that i need a tool for managing my test case management once i have a test cases then i need to execute them that means that i need to execute or uh, the smoke test cases a regression i need to present the results and then on top of that i need to have reporting that means that i need to have a test execution management requirement as well so the test case manage uh, the test management tools nowadays can take care of the test case management and test execution management now if i wanted to automate these uh, test cases either ma- uh, performance or an automation so i need a automation tool it so automation tool cannot work in isolation it has to get integrated with the test management so that i know which test cases i need to execute it then also there are the supporting pillars that we talk about it 
uh, the testing for testing and an automation. They are the test data management because I need to get the test data on demand to the scripts, which I need to execute it. Service virtualization, because if some of the external uh, APIs are not available, I need to virtualize them. And then uh, everybody talks about the DevOps. No, I need to integrate the test automation with the DevOps. Without that, I cannot achieve the, my organization goal and then the source code management as well. So we have a four pillars, test data management, service virtualization, DevOps, and the source code management. So I need to select the tools in a such a way that my entire test, uh, my testing requirements have been met. It. But having, uh, have, and who is going to tell us saying is that, okay, which tool that I need to do it. So what I've seen is that there's an absence of the automation architect in the organization to guide, to provide a technical direction to the leadership and then guide the team on the grouping. Suppose have a leadership, CTO say that there's a problem and he needs say, some technical direction in whom they need to go it. We don't have it. So a lot of organizations, they don't think, they only think from the tools, but they are they also need to think from the right automation, right organization as well. Now, if what also I've seen on the ground is that multiple teams uh, in a big enterprise, every department acts as an own organization. They will end up buying their own tool to meet their uh, automation needs. In that, what happens is you multiple teams will have a multiple automation tools and frameworks for their multiple project automation needs. So that means that it requires heavy maintenance effort. I need to maintain a script. I need to maintain environment. I need to do a user management. But I can, it will only take care of the individual auto, project automation requirements. If I need to do an end-to-end -end automation, which spans across a different application in a business scenario, I can't do because the tools are only selected for that needs it. So that is a challenge. So, so when we look into it, we need to look into it like an end-to-end test automation, the agile test automation. And then if the goal of the organization is the DevOps, the DevOps requirement is that everything needs to be automated. I can't have a 60% regression, 60% new test case, everything 100% automation. So if I'm not able to automate 100%, I'm only able to achieve 70% automation means, what is the, that means that we don't have a solution. The solution might be, there's a gap in the tool. The tool doesn't have the capability to automate rest of the 30% or I don't have a skill set, and I don't have an idea how to address that problem. So. So 100% is required for the DevOps. And also I need to provide a test data which need to be automated. And one important thing is that we only look up, uh, we only look at the uh, ourselves in the application automation, but we also need to look into beyond the application automation. There's a data test engineering. Now I'm providing my environments uh, on in a JIT fashion. That means that my, I need to validate my IAC code as well. So the testing uh, team is, evolving it from application automation to data engineering automation to infrastructure automation so i'm not delving into the middleware and other but it is a mold so when i look into mm -hmm. it i need to look into enterprise test automation which can take care of my varied automation needs with the different application architecture whether it can be a, a mainframe like rajesh talked about it and hema talked about it you should take care of my mainframes you should take care of my desktop cards internet and, and the latest AI ML as well. So that means that I need to have a set of tools. I can't have a multiple tools, which is a cost prohibitive. So I need to select a one enterprise tool or a supplement by another tool so that it can take care of my DevOps needs, in sprint automation, end-to-end -end automation, and uh, and I should uh, I need to take care of the different automations. It. That's what I say. Thanks, Mon. You've, you've covered a lot of topics in that. Um, there is there is one controversial point that I can actually pick up from what you said. You know, every team within an enterprise is deciding on what to do. And what we are seeing in the market today is, you know, you don't have centralized testing teams anymore. They're embedded into different projects, right? So if that happens, taking a decision on what should be your architecture of testing becomes difficult. So I think Raghu, I can come to you with that controversial question that then how do you decide, right? If you, if you leave the decision-making to individual teams, then as an enterprise, how do I consolidate? A very good question. And I, I thank Mohan for raising that controversial point, because I think uh, th those, those are the kind of challenges that actually hit the floor, right? So, I mean, all of us on the panel, we have seen 
uh, the two-way street. We have seen enterprises dismantling centralized testing teams and give, giving them and germinating them in the respective businesses. Um, <clears throat> but at, even today, uh, I, at least in, in the client landscape that I'm involved with and, and, and in my network, we also see clients who are also centralizing. Uh, but the point is, I think what has changed in the way centralization happens and decentralization happens. Uh, that that approach has changed and and come to think of it one of the things that uh, people miss uh, generally I mean as enterprises is <clears throat> um, we talked about a uh, uh, problem of plenty right so different different people in different parts of the organization different silos think that uh, for their isolated problem they have found a solution and there's no reason to wait for <clears throat> a larger enterprise to give a green and then imbibe it <clears throat> so that's one of the challenges. The second is uh, <clears throat> with heterogeneity of tools in the enterprises, then again, <clears throat> ability, <clears throat> I'm sorry, ability to reuse, ability to scale, ability to replicate is also missing. Um, the point is, I think, I, I, I don't really, I, I think Mohan made the point that in, in it is, it is, it is, it is not as important as it is about tooling as much it is about also um, also determining the testing organization that is driving the tooling right and two points uh, there one is today <clears throat> in most of the enterprises you don't see uh, or or you don't see or you don't see with enough maturity a horizontal architecture practice in the testing organization somebody who understands tech as a horizontal uh, in the enterprise. And when I say tech as a horizontal in the enterprise, it is a myth for us to think that there's one tool that will solve all the problems. It will. It is also a myth for us to think that uh, we can solve the problem in isolation. So the need is definitely that it is more than one tool, definitely. And, and to your point, Manish, you made that unified testing tool approach, right? So the unification is more than one tool. <clears throat> But it is also not just a addendum of heterogeneous tools across the enterprise. So someone has to understand it. Some part of the testing organization has to understand it, and and therefore it's very important. Uh, we we generally whenever the terms architecture uh, and architects uh, at the SDLC level are, are spoken about, we we talk about architects only from a development front or a product management front, right? So it is very important to establish a technology and an architecture group within the testing organization, which is horizontal and which is uh, under the skin of the enterprise, but over the testing organization, right? So that is point number one. The other thing that uh, I think sometimes, you know, it is very easy to uh, convince people with data. Uh, no amount of philosophy, no amount of logic, no amount of emotion conveys points as much as data conveys. So at enterprise level, the need for holistic measure and management of uh, metrics of SDLC and specifically STLC, the software testing lifecycle. And I, when I, I don't mean test TDM there, I mean the metrics across the testing lifecycle. If you are able to uh, aggregate those metrics, um, uh, draw those data points from multiple source systems, and show that uh, as as a dashboard uh, and a meaningful dashboard as to across the enterprise how is the value getting unlocked or value getting blocked using data and metrics, then a lot of those tool debates not invented by me, not bought by me, not built by me debates, uh, I don't have the skill debates, all will go away into the background because then you are able to show like, like I mean, I, I take this example, like, like the Chandra and dashboard we saw yesterday when we were landing on the moon, right? So if you show that dashboard uh, to a CXX level person, and say that right from your requirement, which was conceived, to a feature that is pushed into production and the feedback that you're getting in at a block level, this is how the value is getting blocked or locked. A lot of these debates can be won by niche. These two important points, if uh, if they are practiced in the test organization in some way or the other, in some shape or form, uh, a lot of these uh, walls will break. Uh, Manish, could, could I just yeah, add on please. to this? Yeah, I, I, listen, uh, some fantastic points by, by Raghu there. And, and just latching on to the 
the, the and I saw a comment as well right that the TCOEs that we know them in the past are going away but they are coming back in a in a different form right um and 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 I'll take it back to why and we we talked about this earlier is we're sacrificing quality and value because of pace and the CIOs and the CTOs are seeing this with outages with their in production so they, they're using the metrics they're finally going back and using the metrics that Ragu was talking about to say cripes I am sacrificing quality and what we see them doing now is it may not be the big COEs but a federated model what, what Ragu was talking about where this federated TCOE is managing the metrics the frameworks the tools um, end-to-end -end testing, performance testing um, within there. So they're building consistency across the organization with the tools and the frameworks so, sometimes um, and the practices. But I think, again, we're, we, it, it, you know, these, these COEs kind of go in ebbs and flows, but I, with the implementation of DevOps and, and Agile and organizations going too quickly at these and doing a top-down, pushing it down into the organization, they're seeing it's not working. Everybody thinks they have autonomy to do whatever they want to do. Some are doing testing, some aren't. Some are doing metrics, some aren't. But I think these 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 value added groups within this federated group with architects, with metrics, etc., will enable organizations to bring back the quality that they need and 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 basically decrease these these production issues that they're having. Yeah. I think what Adrian said, Hema, about DevOps top down i i have a hypothesis that devops being implemented in an enterprise is actually bringing everything together right even if you have siloed different projects and teams if there's a consolidated collaboration platform of devops in the company you bring these testing tools and frameworks together do you see that happening um absolutely right manish so i'll tell you one classic example that recently that you know in one of the very large uk you know, client that we faced, right? Um, it is kind of a fed, uh, they were actually originally centralized, the tools, the testing, all, you know, kind of a stuff. What has happened is as part of the reorg or whatever it is, every, every leader comes, they want to bring in some change. So obviously they want to do decentralized kind of a stuff. So each LOB is the line of business, different products. They went into, selected their own, you know, set of, um, you know, tools and partners to start working on it right again following devops enterprise bdd all that you know nobody wants to get say that hey i'm following waterfall i'm following this no i'm following ai i'm following this i know whether what is behind the scene is a different issue right it's like the movies they say we are different when you go, go there beyond five minutes you can't even sit and watch the movie so that's the kind of situation here yeah right so when they started looking at it you know what happened is then everybody started looking at the tools okay i want this i want that i think everybody came up with a bu budget cost right everything goes uh, you know and when they when they went back to the you know whoever is supposed to be then the vendor management the whole thing got bloated up right everybody was putting their own numbers their things and there was nobody who was kind of you know seeing that you know the the big picture of saying that how do we optimize this? How do we rationalize this? There is, I mean, how the complexity was not even considered. Everybody was, you know, felt that they are the center of the universe and they started making decisions, right? And that's where this DevOps, when you rightly said at an enterprise level, it is like a, you know, I would say a, a democratic kind of a thing where you have the center and the, you know, state having their own kind of a step, like the way it is working, right? So that's the kind of st structure that that's needs that's coming up. And people have gone through a lot of lessons to do this. And one of the things I, I realized, this is a classic example. I'm just saying this because it just happened two months back and people are, the client, very large client has learned, you know, that the, that it is not possible. And so they've started back to centralizing all the tools, all the environments, as well as the kind of skills that is required so that there is a, you know, centralized raising, the knowledge management, the processes, the artifacts and all those kind of stuff. Well, whatever you want to do, you want to associate with that particular partner, go ahead and do it. But you follow this. So like that mm. that's the kind of, you know, uh, stuff there that's being coordinated. What this also means is today, almost all organizations, irrespective of the vertical, irrespective of the things, they have to also align to certain goals on the ESG, 
right? And testing is going to play a significant part in going forward because earlier we used to have all kinds of environments, uh, you know, uh, QA uh, for performance environment, this environment, user acceptance. Environment. But I think there is going to be a lot of concentration on ESG goals and one way to pinch, push that, like the way they used to cut testing, you know, as towards the end, they're going to push us, you know, the quality team, testing team to, you know, bring in what I call the credits as far as the ESG goals, the carbon credits and all those things. And that is where this DevOps at the centralized is helping big way because they're looking at environments, flexibility on the environments, right? Um, the, and this is especially the cloud one. It is at runtime at will, you can scale up and scale down kind of things. There's no lock-in of the environments, you can say. It. So reusability is very high. You want to, you know, if you, you, if you make an image, you can kind of reuse it. Optimization infrastructure, your tools, and all those kind of things. So that is where it is. But again, what it boils down is the governance, right? You might put all these things, if you don't have the proper governance at the central, I mean, the leadership is not right, then all what you want to do is not going to help us achieve. That's what, uh, that's the, that, that's the other thing. The maturity is very important, right? You might have DevOps, DevSecOps, you know, having the BDD, enterprise BDD, all kinds of stuff that you want to do it. And the latest and the greatest of the, you know, keywords and buzzwords you want to implement it. Maturity and the culture is very, very important. And constant feedback, you know, go, you know, in the federated structure is imp important. And if you have any, you know, I would say, um, you know, communication gap or lack of communication, or even a drop in communication is going to really boomerang. And that is also something that I, I, I've seen it. Above all, executive sponsorship, right? A lot of things works, especially in this federated, only through strong executive sponsorship. So as to bring high reusability, right? Which again goes back to the ESG goals kind of a situation and empowering the teams on the ground. You know, if you, otherwise it, it you're not, there is no motivation for the people. So you also have to uh, empower kind of a stuff. So obviously DevOps at an enterprise level, there are a lot of complexities, but many organizations are learning through this process. And what I've seen is federated structure with strong governance, with you know uh, adhering to some of this new set of goals that's being defined across the, you know, um, critically uh, to be adhered to. So these are the things that I would say Manish. I love your analogies uh, that you're giving him up. Thank you. Uh, just to add it, Manish, uh, my recent experience on this, I was talking to another client. So he was, uh, uh, so they wanted the autonomy of the people. So they don't want to give it. So that's the reason the organization we suggested saying is that you go with the federated model, whatever the name they wanted to give it. So that uh, uh, because they were in a decentralized model and, and the teams are su separated and they have their own process. So one team, they have their own languages uh, of speaking it. So, and different processes, different tools. And because of that, reusability is not there. People are not sure how to uh, give the metrics as well. Then we suggested go for the federated model so that they have a, a autonomy of the people. They can take a decision in their project themselves. But when it comes to the certain processes, tools, they can be common across example, test case management, metrics. Mm -hmm. Uh, tools that would be required so that we can consult it and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and then which will reduce the cost as well. It so and then clients started the embarking on that journey. Now they started realizing that benefit. So so that means that they are saving the cost and everybody is speaking the same language, the same practices, best practices got implemented. Whether whether it is a test case management, test automation, or, or the environment side as well. All right. So I think what, what all of you are saying is, you know, governance and standardization is important. But let me pick up on what Mohan said about just in time and him uh, talked about ESG, because that's the third topic in the panel discussion, right? Testing landscape. Many customers I speak to are always scribbing about, oh, I left the testing landscape in the cloud running and it's burning a hole. So Rajesh would love to hear from you. How are customers managing the runtime execution environment setups these days? Yeah. Are they standardizing yeah. on that? They are, uh, Manish. I think good thing is that there's a lot of visibility. I mean, given that what we spoke about DevOps, right? Now we have a more visible area of how our environment is running, what are the burn rate that we have across any runtimes. And uh, so the concept of minimal testing is now picking, Manish. So, what is happening is now uh, we assume that we need to have 24 bar 7 testing automation across 
we assume that we need to have multiple n environments for performance. But the point is that uh, once we have the dashboard, these reports, what is my spend on testing? What is my adoption of my environment landscape? We found it uh, across uh, most of the clients. What we realized was people realized that we are keeping it's like keeping a car running even when you're not in in, in the house, right? So uh, so people are actually realizing that we are actually spending a lot on the environments rather more than what you're supposed to. It's actually better to time it precisely. So that's where you have all your monitoring tools coming up, right? Saying that, look, what are we going to do and how long we need to keep our systems running, right? So that's one thing. Uh, one interesting aspect, Manish, is in terms of testing spend, uh, one trend that I saw amongst customers is uh, we are spending, we still are running in the mentality of software testing. So uh, what I realized, we are speaking to a couple of our clients. Uh, we know that our digital world is spilling beyond uh, the digital, right? So it's spilling over into real life, it's spilling into software, it's your internal of things, right? What has not co caught up is we are all of our testing fraternity is still talking about software testing mechanism, right? We still don't think about system testing uh, landscape or system testing framework, right? And people are uh, putting in an example. I, I, I know one of my clients actually told that, look, you're spending a lot of time on putting your time and money in an environment which is on platform. But most of my business happens in the front end, right from your uh, right from your production devices. Where is your production manufacturing unit? You're not linked. Where are you investing in the environments? So the other shift that I see in Manish is what people are saving from the software environments and going to the cloud. There's a spent increase in the systems and environments. People are investing more in device testing. People are investing more in mobile testing. 5G testing is coming up. So people are uh, uh, what are the OPEX and CAPEX which is being saved the uh, the software testing you know, in terms of tools, licenses. I mean, this is a good amount of maturity that's come to optimizing landscapes. Uh, and all of the investments are now being poured into the system testing landscapes, right? So I think that is one major shift to getting. And I am, uh, uh, I would actually encourage the team also, right? be it healthcare. I mean, you, you cut across domains. Uh, your healthcare, your software system, which is doing analysis and all spilling onto medical devices. Uh, in engineering and manufacturing, all your monitoring systems for your entire ERP packaging or landscape are now spilling into the front end of manufacturing. Your supply chains are spilling into the uh, in, onto the roads. Your retail is spilling onto your sub, uh, delivery and store fronts. Where are the testing community investing? I do, but uh, unfortunately, we are not investing enough. Like we, are, I know uh, uh, Raghu mentioned about the moon lander, right? Are we testing our systems which are landing in the systems, right? So that spend is still uh, exorbitantly low. And we still need to, to catch up on a loss, uh, money. But uh, on the other side, I think we are actually optimizing our environment spend landscape uh, because the visibility is high now. So that's my view. Got it. And I think from a, going back to DevOps, right? So if you have different teams on the same platform, when you have to release, the testing team cannot actually wait for infrastructure to be provisioned, okay. right? And I think that was the point that uh, Mohan, you were making about just in time. And I think Hema also talked about the ESG angle. You, know, you don't want somebody who's triggering a test for one application and then sometime another application, then the environment always needs to be running. So what, what do you see, Raghu, as best practices that enterprises are now embracing in this, uh, in this you know, complicated landscape setups for testing? Um... That's a good and loaded question as well. So um, I think I think Hema uh, or somebody made that point earlier. I think uh, most of the enterprises today are still victims of pace or speed, um, and and uh, and therefore uh, they've gone in a certain direction, right? In terms of um, siloed spending, uh, broken. Um, structures across SDLC while they talk about DevOps and agile maturity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, Adrian spoke about uh, the fact that you know uh, if you go and tell the CXX at the layer at the end of the day that um, you have suffered on quality, you have suffered on speed, and you have suffered on um, whatever uh, cost, right? Uh, in in this way. Uh, they are realizing it. They, I mean, un, 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 until you show that, uh, enterprises don't realize. Um, and, and therefore, this, I would call the new age test organization structures are, are forming shape. Uh, there are very, very few examples where they have matured and most of them are still in the formative stage. And uh, Rajesh spoke about uh, investment into uh, closer to production kind of systems, right? The system testing and stuff like that. So. 
in 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 the landscape that we are we see the increasingly the enterprises realizing the need for that uh, have they progressed yet on that the answer is no um, uh, there is a lot more to come second i see is our old adage of you know this whole risk based testing which which was a nomenclature uh, that came and was beaten to death um, uh now i think is uh, is coming in different forms and shape uh the whole the whole sdlc cycle and specifically again i come back to the sdlc cycle because testing is about what at the end of the day you can do it infinitely and you cannot give guarantee for zero production defects uh both both, both are true so the only way you can uh, make uh, testing effective is to increase the confidence in software that it is likely to be successful in production a and b um increase uh, the confidence of the business that it can plug a loophole if it is found in production at 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 a, at a, at a racing speed um and to be able to do that uh, uh the the whole i mean now, nowadays we also see this a lot of enterprises adopting value streams right uh, uh, so if you take a value stream view at the end of the day it is a value that has to get delivered so what is the risk in that entire value stream so that uh, i deliver what i need to deliver so uh, risk based approach and a lot of enterprises are also struggling uh, i would say as an industry also we have not yet uh, 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 matured in impact analysis uh, all of us talk about impact analysis but uh, and again there are silo tools uh, a lot of analytics uh, still needs to get matured and piped in to the overall plumbing of the enterprise tool landscape uh, because for a change that is introduced or not introduced what has broken and what has what needs to be focused on as far as testing is concerned is still a million dollar question is it better than what it was the answer is yes but we have, enterprises have not yet progressed it so impact analysis a risk based approach um and and lot of lot of enterprises have co continued uh, have been and they are continuing to focus on uh, automation but again uh automation everybody wants automation uh, as the feature is conceived in the product manager's mind i mean that that's that's as as fast as it can get so um again a lot of cots uh, related tools are going out of the door more plumbing and over the horizon uh, tools are coming in to give the uh, automation uh, solutions now it's ai ml everybody wants um ai ml based test automation that that's another trend that we are seeing um and uh, uh in fact uh, some in 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 most clients landscape we still see some part of exploratory testing happening exploratory testing was supposed to be the basics and hygiene but given the complexity of the architecture the pace at which we are running uh, exploratory testing is still very relevant and can do the uh, a fresh sort of uh, thinking view if i may in the context of how the um uh, application is likely to behave in uh, production and a lot of enterprises yes. are taking feedback about applications in the social media uh, and and any other uh, places uh, those feedback loops are taken very seriously and piped back to the product management at best so these are some of the yeah. trends that are picking up in the enterprise landscape i think listening listening to all of you i'm i would hate to be a cxo in an enterprise you know dealing with you know so much of complexity but you also talked about ai so i think i have to play to the audience and ask an ai question uh given the limited time that i have adrian with all of these complexities do you think you know ai in testing is going to solve some of these challenges that we talked about today about landscape and tooling that is a great question and i am mean, asked this on a daily basis and and we've been doing a lot of research ourselves manish over the last 8 months i think we have to be careful right so we need to be able to protect ourselves protect our products um protect the companies that we work for here and ensure that there there are boundaries in place so i can tell you i can give you a, some examples of where clients are experimenting and where we're experimenting with with ai so um we have one client that's bought a um an enterprise license for chatgpt and what they're doing is they have um loaded all of their defects into chatgpt and are basically then running analysis on what's the optimal number of defects from that da data set that's there that into a sprint that I'm going to get the most value for right so they're using it in 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 interesting ways another client is um basically loaded 
all of their use cases into ChatGPT. And it's more about analyzing um, use cases for consistency of language and ensuring that the dependencies um, are being identified identified in those in these use cases, right, of different components and features, which helps us from a testing perspective, right? If we if we're able to do that analysis, we have traceability. Um, we're looking at it from a you know a, a script generation uh, perspective. Can can AI help us um, get a leg up on, on script generation? But it does hallucinate. And I always use the example. I give the example to clients of there was a an attorney. Um, <clears throat> that um, asked um, ChatGPT to create a brief for him. And it wrote this beautiful brief with the cited these cases and he gave it to the judge and the judge said, this is fantastic, but two of the cases you've cited don't exist. So we have to be careful, right? And that's the hallucination part, uh, part of it. Um, there are a lot of tools that are coming on the marketplace that talk about autonomous testing and using AI. We have to be careful because we don't know whether it's creating test cases for the right behavior or the wrong behavior. So we still need that human inter interaction to look at it to make sure it's doing things in a correct manner. I don't think we've got to that place yet where we can completely rely on these autonomous tools to do what they need to do. We still need that human interaction. Um, but again, they're just some some examples, test data management, test environment management. We kind of touched on on, on, on those with, with the guys as well. I think there's some great opportunities to use AI there, um, um, you know, again, helping identify the optimal number of test cases up front to fail as fast as possible um, from an optimization perspective. So yeah, I think there's a lot of use cases, but we, we need to be careful. So Manish, if I might add a point to that, uh, to what Adrian was saying. I mean, it's uh, today everybody wants to jump onto that and see how they can do it. But honestly speaking, on the ground, it's you know, still very ex uh, experimental. I at this point in time, I would look at more like a vaccination. So please do not go ahead and you know <laughs> do an end mask kind of things. Please do the tests across the you know how the vaccination gets rolled out in the faces. You know, forget about the COVID vaccine, but the what was typically done. You know, your polio or whatever it is. Follow that process before it gets us. That way we'll get to know. You know, we have to guard our client secrets. We have to make sure. You know, I recently read in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Samsung or I forgot, but they, out of curiosity, posted and that whole code became went into chat GPT, uh, you know, database kind of stuff. So I, it's You're paid right. to observe like a vaccination before it gets deployed in us. Exactly. You're exactly. right. The, the way I'm visualizing it, folks, by the way, is, you know, it's like that mRNA for the vaccine. This is like test ops, right? The AI is doing a lot of test ops in the background to solve these problems of landscapes, frameworks, and tooling, right? Not, not only for writing the test cases of the data. This is more for the operations piece. But I know we're at time. My team has uh, messaged me a couple of times. I think we got carried away in, in such a fantastic conversation. You know, what I would do is before we close, I would just love to get each of you to give one line on what should be, you know, your advice to the audience as they think about setting up a landscape for an enterprise for testing. Okay. Rajesh, I can uh, start with you. Yeah. So oh, go, go ahead, Emma. Sure. See, one thing uh, I would suggest is adaptation and flexibility to change according to the alignment to the industry and client demands and their end customers, right? Otherwise, we have seen a lot of organizations just losing their track, not getting flexible and uh, the speed at which it, you need to do it. You don't need to be fast, don't need to be uh, a pause also. But that is what is going to be. We have seen the likes of the Kodaks and so many people having completely lost because they were not flexible to, to those changes. So the same thing applies to our industry as well. If you don't adapt, you, you're just going to lose yourself out there. Thank you. Rajesh? Sure, Manish. Manish, the only thing I will probably guide to the team is uh, have purpose at the center of whatever you do, especially landscape and strategy, right? So what, what does your organization need? What's your business objective? Because I see we are extremely good in people. We have a lot of talented people. We have extraordinary, wonderful tools. Uh, we are great at building grand processes. But is it fit for what we really need to do? What does the organization need? What are we testing for? Have the purpose in mind. Uh, and that will guide you to choose the right strategy, right tooling, right landscape, and see 
and you have the right focus, I mean, you will work collaboratively, silos will break, you will have the right tools and environments in place, uh, you will end up spreading what you need, right? So I think the rest of it will fall in place. It's, it's on op uh, the operations of, but have the objective Thank is the you. only thing I would uh, suggest. Thank you, Rajesh. Adrian? Um, it's a great, great question. Um, I would say, you know, if you can get your organizations to move away from de defect detection to prevention, and that means collaborating across those organizational and, and, and geographical boundaries, and it, we brought it up about the metrics, using data and the right set of metrics to be able to have those conversations with everybody to the left of you. Remember, in, in people, it, 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 testing is a product of what happens before it. So if we can prevent issues up front and we can collaborate from a tooling, from a metrics perspective, from a framework perspective, things go much smoother instead of being silent activity. So try to get your organization to move from detection to prevention and things should be better. Thank you. Mohan and Raghu, if you can keep it brief because I've got my marketing team yeah. waving at me frantically yeah. from the door. I, I will close it, yeah. So I, I wanted to say one thing. So testing is one of the engineering organizations. So we have to work closely with our engineering partners to demonstrate engineering excellency in the testing. I'm using the engineering excellence in the testing. For that, we need to have automation first and automation every principle, everywhere principle, so that we can become a successful engineering partner with them. And for that, we need to learn, unlearn something to learn new things. It so, so because the technology evolving, process is evolving, techniques are evolving. It absolutely. Great. And uh, Manish, so since a lot of panelists have told what to do, I, I'll, I'll touch upon a little bit of how to do it. I think we we speak about continuous delivery, continuous testing, uh, but uh, on the software side, we need to practice continuous collaboration and communication. And that has to be continuous, not when it is an escalation point, when it is a breaking point, but it has to be continuous in nature. And that 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 needs some operating model change uh, horizontally. Second, holistic measurement framework and governance. Uh, we spoke about this, but then it has to be holistic in nature across the life cycle and a visibility uh, to, to convince. And third, uh, but not the least, is early involvement of all stakeholders. Uh, people don't like surprises and therefore people don't like change. Um, so early involvement, continuous collaboration and holistic measurement. So okay. Manil, I just want 30 seconds because today everybody is talking about AI, Gen AI and testing will, you know, we we'll lose a lot of jobs. Honestly, no, testing is all about emotions and different variations. So we are going to be more involved now because the AI itself, we have to test it. So we have, we're going Absolutely. to have a lot more complexities to do the testing and we have a lot more career ahead. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think the takeaway from the session is flexibility, collaboration and learning. I think that's, that's what will manage the whole heterogeneous landscape we're all dealing with. With that, thank you so much. I know we're over time. I appreciate all the advice that you have given to the audience. And thank you, audience, for all the questions that came in. I hope I picked up many of them and presented it to the panel. Thank you so much. And have a great day ahead and rest of the sessions as well. Thank you all. Thank you thank all. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.